Welcome back. This is the part two of graph similarity algorithms. In the previous video, we covered Jacquard similarity and overlap similarity. Their calculation is based on the neighborhood. In this video, we will dive into the other three similarity algorithms that rely on node properties. In property based similarity algorithms, node is represented as a set of quantitative properties. The similarity scores are computed by the corresponding property values. Three representatives are cosine similarity, Euclidean distance, and Pearson correlation coefficient. We will consider the similarity between use A and B based on their ratings for five movies. The rating for each movie is stored in the property of the user node. Each user can be represented by the values of these five properties. If we view A and B as two five-dimensional vectors, cosine similarity between them equals to the cosine of angle theta between A and B. And this is computed by taking the dot product of the two vectors and dividing it by the product of their magnitudes. The result is 0 0.71. Cosine similarity takes range from minus 1 to 1. Two vectors with exactly the same direction has a cosine similarity of 1, while as two vectors completely opposed to each other have a similarity of minus 1. Cosine similarity is a measurement of direction. Their magnitude is not of importance. Next, Euclidean distance. It's the straight line distance between two points. In math, it's very simple, as illustrated in this two-dimensional example. This formula can be generalized to an n-dimensional space. In our movie rating example, the distance between user A and B is 9.38. The range of Euclidean distance is 0 to infinity, with larger distance indicating that the two entities are more dissimilar. Therefore, in practice, Euclidean distance is often used in some normalized form. One approach is to take the inverse of 1 plus the original distance, which produces 0 0.096 in this example. Normalized Euclidean distance is scaled between 0 to 1. 0 means the distance between A and B is infinite, and 1 means they are at the same position. Last, Pearson correlation coefficient. This is the most common way of measuring the linear relationship between two variables. Consider user A and another user C who also rated for the five movies. Let's plot the corresponding ratings of A and C with two axes, A on the horizontal and C on the vertical. For movie 1, A gives 5 and C gives 4, so we plot a point as location 5, 4, and we do the same for the other four movies. Now we can draw a line up to the right and let all points closely clustered around this line. This indicates a strong and positive linear relationship between them. It implies that when A gives a movie a high rating, C is very likely to rate it highly as well. Conversely, if A dislikes a movie, we can assume that C is also unlikely to enjoy it. Comparing A with another user D, we can still draw a line that goes up, but only let the points loosely scattered around it. This indicates a weak positive linear relationship between A and D. It suggests that when A likes a movie, D tends to like it as well, but their ratings may not be very close. In the case of A and E, the line goes down to the right, and it shows a strong negative linear relationship. When one variable increases, the other variable decreases. And correspondingly, there exists a weak negative linear relationship. In mass, the Pearson correlation coefficient is defined as the ratio of the covariance of the two variables and the product of their standard deviations. In the case of A and B here, r equals to minus 0 0.34. This table shows the interpretation of the value of r. 
If R lies between zero to one, this indicates a positive linear correlation between two variables. If between minus one to zero, they have negative linear correlation, and a larger absolute value of R indicates a stronger correlation. If R equals to zero, this means the two variables don't have a linear correlation, but they may still have some other forms of correlation or relationship. So A and B here should have a weak negative linear correlation, and we can verify it on the coordinate grid. For the demo, we prepared the dataset of Spotify music tracks. The dataset contains over forty thousand track notes. Each track has property like name, artist, and sixteen quantified musical features. Our target is to use the algorithms to recommend similar tracks, but we see that all these quantitative features are in different scales. So we further rescaled data into minus one to one, so they are all comparable. The dataset was imported into Artipa Manager. We didn't include any edges for this demo because it's not needed for the similarity comparison. And it's important that all the properties we will use for comparing similarity need to be loaded to Engine for acceleration. You can do it by click LTE besides each property, and if the property is already loaded, this icon is highlighted. We will use some photograph by Ed Sheeran as example. To find this node out, we will filter by name equal to photograph. We have five returns, and this one with UUID seven eight nine seven is what we want. Then we will compare all tracks in this graph with track seven eight nine seven. Remove this condition to get all the tracks. Then collect all the tracks UUID in an array. We will pass it into the algorithm. In the algorithm, compare track seven eight nine seven with all tracks. The type is cosine, and we need to specify all these properties as node features. The format of the results is the same as we saw in the previous video of jacquard similarity and overlap similarity. Each row contains node one, node two, and their similarity. Now let's get the name and artist of the top ten similar tracks. Order the similarity score from high to low and keep the top ten. Then find nodes whose UUID equals to node two, and return the name, artist, and similarity. The results is very clear now. If you're interested, you may listen to these songs and see if you agree with these recommendations. Of course, you can change the type to Euclidean, and we see、uh, the two results are very similar. And the type can be Pearson two, but the results are more different. However, I would say that cosine similarity or Euclidean distance is more suitable for this case. We post the UQLs in the demo here, and the other resources too. If you want to learn more about graph algorithms, please subscribe to our channel and check out our website. Thank you, and see you in the next video.